we have discussed uh, about the uh, basics of a computer system like how the computer systems work uh, where we have discussed like how the uh, coordination of hardware's uh, hardware components specifically the memory unit the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit takes place so in today's class what we'll do is we'll be discussing about the evolution of computers like how the uh, computers got evolved and uh, why where we are as of now like as of today and uh, what are the uh, major changes that took in the place uh, that took in the industry of computation and yes apart from that we'll also see uh, if time permits then we'll be discussing about uh, the, the the concept of data capturing storage and retrieval okay so yes uh, let's move ahead and let's get started with our today's topic that is evolution of computers so like um, as of today we know that uh, the systems that we are using or the devices that we are using are much more capable and much more evolved and much more advanced as of the devices that we uh, used a couple of years back okay so agar hum log baat kare uh, दो तीन साल पहले के डिवाइसेस के बारे में लेट्स सी तुम्हारे पास जो आज के डेट में स्मार्टफोन है या फिर आज के डेट में जो तुम्हारे पास टेक्नोलॉजी है उसको अगर हम लोग कंपेयर करें दो तीन साल वाले टेक्नोलॉजीज के साथ तो इन दैट केस दो टेक्नोलॉजी बिकेम ऑप्सुलेट okay so uh, not completely obsolete but yes up to some extent those technologies are to be considered as obsolete the reason why i'm saying those technologies are to be considered as obsolete because each and every day uh, there is advancement in technologies there are certain changes which takes in the place of or uh, that takes in the field of information technology so like uh, in order to inculcate in order to in order to uh, stay in order to stay fit for the uh, era in order to stay fit for the uh, current uh, current year or that you are using and in order to stay fit and in order to stay up to date definitely those technologies which have been uh, which have been discovered or which have been invented needs to be inculcated within the uh, devices that you use okay so for an instance if we take like uh, all the modern computers all the digital computers that we have starting from the calculators to starting from the uh, yes starting from the calculators to the smartphones okay so every device you name it the laptops the desktop computers any computer they follow a simple architecture and that architecture is basically the von neumann architecture okay so what exactly the von neumann architecture architecture is in a computer this architecture is to be followed like we will have a separate input component that input component will send the data to the uh, yes the processing component uh, in which we'll have the cpu and the memory integrated and after processing that component will give you the output so this is basically the von neumann architecture and this is the advanced form of von neumann architecture you can see on the basis of this architecture we have this architecture right so yes the inception or the uh, development of uh, all the modern computers that we have is uh, are basically those computers which follow the von neumann architecture and if you talk about the uh, first computer which came uh, with these architectures basically the eniac i hope uh, you have heard about the uh computer eniac uh, in the lower classes like uh, class 4 5 6 or something like that okay so eniac is basically uh, the first computer or the first digital computer if you see is basically electronic numerical integrator and computer and yes uh, as i said it is the first digital computer why i am saying digital because yes it can be binary programmed it can be binary programmed okay so agar baat kare is computer ke bare mein uh, we can perform binary programs or we can uh impose logic in this computer so that uh, we can uh, we can get our tasks done okay and if we talk about the evolution uh, from the generation perspective we all know that we have five generation of computers because that you have already learned in the lower classes okay so in the first generation you can see this is the image of a first generation computer which had the vacuum tube technology completely unreliable which was also very costly we generated a lot amount of it uh, slow input and output devices huge size uh, needed air conditioning systems and not uh, non portable yes obviously non portable because of the gigantic size you can just imagine the size of the monitor that we have over here so this is exactly a tv okay which gets connected with the system okay so which is compared uh, comparatively very 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 big okay and yes some of the uh, generation of this computer was eniac edvac univac ibm 701 ibm 650 okay and if we talk about the second generation computers uh, second generation computers came with transistors little bit reliable with comparison to the first generation computers but once again yes uh, if if we talk about the size the size was little uh, huge but yes if you compare it with the first generation computers and the size was little bit less okay that is small we generated lot amount of heat consume lot um, less electricity in comparison with the first generation of computers faster than the first generation still very costly ac required supported machines uh, supported machine and assembly languages okay so what are a machine and assembly languages we will come to know okay when we when we will uh, when we will be discussing about the software components that will come to know what exactly machine and assembly languages are 
and if you talk about the generation of this computers then some of the examples of this computers are ibm 1620 ibm 7094 cdc 1604 CDC 3600 and Univac 1108. Okay. And if we talk about the third generation computers, uh, yes, uh, yeah, there is a major, major change. Uh, like in the first generation, we had the vacuum tubes. Those who don't know what exactly the vacuum tubes are, uh, let me show you. I hope uh, you have you have definitely heard about the vacuum tubes in the lower classes. In case if you have not heard or in case if you have not seen, this is what exactly the vacuum tubes look like. Okay. So these are the examples of vacuum tubes. These are the examples of vacuum tubes. Okay. Uh, this was the vacuum tubes and if you talk about uh, the transistors i have already shown uh, one image of transistors i guess in the first classes so but still let me show what exactly transistors look like okay so those are the transistors okay and if you talk about the integrated circuits these are the integrated circuits okay so this is what an integrated circuit looks looks like okay yes so yes, if we talk about the third generation, they used ICs, uh, more reliable in comparison to the previous two generations, smaller size, generated less state, uh, faster, lesser maintenance, costly, AC required, consumed lesser electricity. Yes, they supported high level languages. Some of the generations were like uh, IBM 360, Honeywell 6000, PDP, IBM 370 by 168, uh, and uh, TDC 316, uh, okay? And yes, after that, the next generation that we have is basically the fourth generation, which used the technology uh, called the VLSI technology, which basically stands for very large scale integration. Here, what we do is here uh, we integrate a lot many components into a single component or single chip. Okay, yani both sare tum technologies ko yaha pe both sare components ko ek saath merge karke ek single chip mein laade to that's why we call it as very large scale integration. So if we talk, if we look into your motherboard, in the motherboard you can see you have many components that is already built in. But if we talk about the first generation of computers, they basically had each and every component separate. So in order to uh, 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 the moment you start integrating all those components in a single board or in a single uh, component, we call the technology to be as very large scale integration. As of today, we also have the concept of ULSI, which is ultra large scale integration because of we because of which we are able to see the uh, device like smartwatches, okay, smartwatches, then your smartphones, okay, and even thinner uh, laptops, okay, because uh, we are integrate we are able to integrate lot many components in a single board itself, okay. Yeah, mm, portable and reliable, yeah, used for PCs. Yes, personal computers came into existence because of the portable uh, portability, because of the concept of portability and because of the size. Uh, pipeline processing, what exactly pipeline processing is? Pipeline processing is that processing where the output of one process becomes the input for the other process, okay? Uh, like uh, there are multiple process which uh, goes in the backend. And uh, if, if, a, if a job is done, and the output that you're getting for the job becomes the input for the other job. For example, uh, I hope you have all have given the class 10 exam or the uh, you have all have passed out the class 10 uh, class. Okay. So, yes, class 11 mein admission tabhi le paoge na jab tumhare pas class 10 ka mark sheet rahega. Agar class 10 ka mark sheet nahi rahega, to class 11 mein admission nahi le paoge. The task is very simple. So, this is the pipeline processing. Yani ki, in order to take admission class 11, you need to have the mark sheet of class 10. I need to have the marks of class 10. Okay. If you don't have the marks of class 10, in that case, you won't be able to take admissions in class 11. Similarly, if you have, if you are uh, going to join uh, colleges or if you're going to join universities, in order to join those higher education institutions, you need to have the uh, marks or you need to have the mark sheet of class 12 in order to get started with the admission process of uh, the higher education institutions. Okay. Similarly, uh, in order to, uh, let's say, in pipeline processing, what we have is uh, in case if you have an input and that input is being processed, then the output of that particular uh, process will become the input for the next process. Okay. Let's say you have two processes, P1 and P2. Marpas do processes. P1 ka jo output hoga, that will go to the input of P2. Okay. So this type of processing are known as the pipeline processing. Okay. Yani ki, the output of one process becomes the input of the other process okay concept of internet was introduced great development in the field of networks computers became easily available yes ab dukano mein aise chote chote dukan koi par bhi bolo shaharon mein gaon mein in fact computers sare mein har ek jagah mein computers tumhe dekhne ko mil chuke hain to kuch kuch examples hain yahan par tum dekh sakte ho dec 10 star 1000 pdp 11 cray 1 and cray x mp and these two are super computers okay yes but they fall under the category of fourth generation because they used the technology of vlsi and uh, yes they were uh, not that big okay 
yes obviously those were supercomputers but if you talk about uh, the first generation the components were not that big and if you talk about the fifth generation computers that is from 2010 to till date yes they use the ELSA technology development on uh, the concept of AI development of natural language processing which uh, got which has the capability to uh, sense uh, the natural language that we speak okay that is the english or uh, asmus or bengali any language that we have so if a computer is able to understand that language uh, that means definitely it is uh, performing some sort of nlp or natural language processing in the back end advancement of uh, parallel processing that means you are able to run multiple tasks parallelly without uh, generating lot amount of it advancement in the concept of super uh, conductor technology and more friendly and more uh, reliable and the interface become more much more uh, easy uh, availability of very powerful and compact computers at cheaper rates okay like a uh, concept of ai included robotics uh, neural networking game playing okay development of expert systems to make additions in real life situations okay and yes obviously the natural language processing which i have already explained and some of the uh, generation of these computers were like the desktop laptops notebooks ultrabooks chromebook okay even the smartphones that we are that we are using as of today apart from that uh, there are also computers like quantum computers and all okay uh, which falls under this generation okay but yes definitely since we don't have this computers publicly available they are still under development and definitely in case if you have a, some if you have some sort of other generation like the sixth generation and all will definitely include those computers in that generation because uh, those computers are obviously in role obviously people are using but uh, yes uh, let's see what uh, what uh, time sees and where will be having those computers in which generation will be having those computers okay so this was all about the brief introduction of evolution of computers like what kind of uh, components we use and uh, where we are as of today and from where we have started and which architecture is being followed by all the uh, computers or all the digital computers like uh, uh, that we use okay yes on top of that uh, there is a statement that you can see uh, during 1970s large scale integration of electronic circuits allowed integration of integration of complete cpu on a single chip okay earlier we didn't have the capability to include a or uh, to uh, use a complete cpu in a single chip but with the help of concept like large scale integration yani ki bahut sare components ko ek uh, simple ek simple board mein ya fir ek simple uh, circuit mein uh, jo hai include kar dena so that is basically the large scale integration large scale integration allowed to have uh, cpus okay uh, on a single chip and we call that cpu to be as microprocessor micro because it is very small okay and we call that processor to be a microprocessor and that was uh, developed by intel okay gordon moore was the person uh, who was uh, behind this project okay and he uh, during the inception of that processor okay uh, um, uh, he during inception uh, of that processor uh, gave one law and that law is basically the moore's law so what exactly the law says okay intel founder gordon moore okay introduced moore's law which predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double every 2 years while the cost would be halved okay please try to understand okay so the number of transistors that each and every processor will have will get doubled in each and every 2 year for example let's say if you have uh, two transistors in the year 2010 then definitely by 2012 you will be having four transistors in that in transistor in that particular chip and we'll be calling that processor to be a next generation processor let's say in 2010 you are calling it as first generation let's say first generation x processor okay and in 2012 we will call it as second generation x processor like we have for the case of i3s i5 okay intel uh, fifth generation processors or amd's ryzen 5 third generation or ryzen 5 fourth generation fifth generation like the same concept is used for uh, this cases as well okay uh, here there we have the number of transistors that gets doubled in each and every alter, each and every two years and yes the price also get reduced because if you see comparatively uh, let's say in 50000 you are getting uh, you are getting a processor with uh, let's say two transistors in the next year definitely uh, the cost will be definitely reduced and in the same price or the price near to that you will be getting uh, a same processor with uh, four transistors you can see the amount of uh, transistors that get gets increased okay so that's what uh, i was trying to explain and if you see if you go by the year then from 1940 to 2020 agar tum is chart ko acche se dekho 1940 mein jab hum log ka inception hua tha 1940 se 50 ke beech mein jab inception hua tha ye microprocessors ka to tum dekh sakte ho ki isi bhi ek transistors the but har ek 10 saal har ek decade mein tum dekh sakte ho ki we have uh, 
तो वी हैव इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर्स बाय 10 ये 10 टाइम्स 10 टाइम्स इंक्रीज हो के जा रहा है ओके लाइक लेट्स से बाय 1950 वी हैव 10 ट्रांजिस्टर्स 1960 100 ट्रांजिस्टर्स 1970 1000 तो इनटू 10 इनटू 10 इनटू 10 करके हम लोग जो ट्रांजिस्टर्स के साइज या फिर ट्रांजिस्टर्स के नंबर्स को इंक्रीज कर करके जा रहे हैं ओके एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इफ यू मूव अहेड देन यू कैन सी दैट यस after the lsi technology there have uh, there we have the vlsi technology that is the very large scale integration which uh, allowed us to include many many components within that single chip once again and that was the time where we had the concepts of pcs uh, which was first introduced by ibm then uh, was followed by apple okay and many other uh, manufacturers as of today and yes uh, as of today we have the graphical user operating systems where uh, the operating systems uh, need not to uh, we where we need not to type commands in order to use the operating systems but there was a time where in order to use the operating system you need to learn the command so that time was the, uh, that was a time when using a computer was a difficult task because if you don't know the commands and if you don't remember the commands in that case it becomes very difficult to operate the com- computer in case if you need to uh, if you need to open a drive or if you need to open a folder for that also you need to know a command in case you need to uh, see the list of files that are available in the drive that for that also you need to know the command so that's why people uh they didn't use the computers much okay uh yes the popularity of computer was very less but the moment we had uh, uh the time when the uh, graphical user interface concept came where we have this icons uh, where we have this fancy icons fancy fonts fancy designs and all from that point onwards people started loving the operating system okay people started loving the operating system and yes eventually they started also loving the computer systems as well and as of today if you see uh people uh most of the people they know you they most of the people i i would say each and every alternate people even a 2 year old baby knows how to use a touch uh, touch screen smartphone he also knows that definitely i need to touch that in order to get something or in order to get something into the device definitely he knows and he will tap he or she will definitely tap okay because there is a there is an instinct which uh, tells him that definitely if, uh, if i touch it then definitely i will get something and uh, particularly uh, that child gets amazed with the touch okay so yes if i if we say today even a kid also knows how to use uh, a computer okay so yes uh, this was all about the inception and uh, this was all about uh, the evolution of computers and if you talk about the uh, next wave not the covid wave but the wave um, with respect to the computation uh, where we have the wearable gadgets like the smart watches lens smart lenses headbands headphones in fact the future app- applicants um, like uh, uh, appliances sorry the future appliances that are going to be part of uh, our day to day life task uh, which comes under the category of internet of things where each and every device will be communicating with each other and each and every device will have the ip address so that uh, they can communicate with each other that's why we call uh, that concept to be as internet of things where uh, your fans your uh, uh, your chairs your dustbins your taps uh, water taps your electrical systems will be connected with the internet and you will be able to control uh, with a single device uh, probably your smartphone okay uh, yes this is the next wave that uh, we are moving in and we will be soon uh, entering this wave almost we have entered but uh, still we are uh, we are about to go deeply into this wave uh, into this uh, wave so that's it for uh, this portion so let's move ahead to the next concept that we have uh, is basically uh, the memory unit i will be talking about that uh, then i will be starting with the uh, data capture storage and retrieval since i have already discussed about the primary memory cache memory and the secondary memory in a detailed manner okay and also we have understood the uh, different type of memories that uh, we have and why do we have so many different type of memories so uh, basically i will be discussing this portion and yes after that what i will do is i will move ahead with the data capture storage and retrieval if time permits uh, we have uh, the time is uh, it should should get the time uh, to discuss that okay so if we talk about the units of our digital data that you can see the smallest unit is basically the bit okay after that we have uh, bytes after that we have kilobyte okay followed by uh, megabyte gigabyte terabyte petabyte exabyte zettabyte yottabyte and also yes uh, as of today there is also a fancy term for a huge amount of data uh, probably uh, that is basically the hella byte okay there is hell lot of bytes okay but uh, yes uh, that is uh, still uh, under development of, uh, that is not uh, officially announced that like for a lot of byte will be saying it as hb or something like that uh, yes but people they use uh, data scientists or people which uh, who 
those who uh, who uses data to extract meaningful information or who uh, take data very seriously uh, who deal with huge amount of data obviously we, all of us take data very seriously but yes who deal with a uh, lot amount of data lot 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 many amount of data let's say uh, around uh, 2000 tbs 3000 tbs something like that okay so they will be uh, using the term halabyte or hp okay so uh, the concept that I have is the data capture uh, is necessary and why fully and how to store the data and what is the concept that goes in the back end uh, while retrieving the data okay so have you ever heard uh, have you ever thought like uh, how uh, the uh, search in search engine works like the moment you enter a query the moment you trigger a query uh, it will definitely within a fraction of seconds it will give you the best possible results uh, it is only possible because of this concept like it is able to capture the data store the data efficiently and retrieve the data efficiently that means capturing is also done in an efficient manner storing is also done in an efficient manner at the same time retrieval of the data is also done in an efficient manner we have to un understand this okay so how the capturing goes how uh, we should capture a data okay like uh, if you talk about capturing of data okay you can see uh, nowadays we have digital forms which takes your data uh, probably in uh, for uh, each and every collecting data from the students you have you must have seen your class teacher or uh, yes uh, the coordinators they must have shared the forms with you uh, let's say a few days back i guess uh, you gave id how many of you gave the form or fill the form for the id id cards okay definitely for id cards you have filled the form in that card uh, in that particular form you have uh, definitely filled your data so that is one possible way to capture the data there was a there was a traditional time or there was a time where we used to capture the data from the users manually okay with the, with respect to uh, the uh, manual forms we used to give the manual forms and you, you had to fill those manual forms and yes as of today those forms uh, those manual data entering are of no use because obviously if you are entering uh, the uh, data in a, in a manual form definitely that needs to be entered digitally but uh, if you talk about uh, that uh, physical form that you have that won't be stored for uh, n number of years let's up 20 30 decades i say where is that particular page where uh, that data was uh, where i have uh, done my registration in that case if we don't store it it will be a very problematic scenario similarly if you talk about today's era the ca capturing of data that we can with respect to digital devices needs to be very particular needs to be very uh needs to be very advanced, needs to be uh, very efficient so that while capturing there is no ambiguity or uh, there is uh, uh the data doesn't get uh captured abruptly okay so in order to in order to make it efficient we have organized digital forms okay and also uh digital technologies uh which uh, which allows you to capture the data for example, uh, if you talk, if you take uh, an instance uh, like the example of shopping malls or uh, the uh, yes, uh, the shopping complexes, they basically use what they uh, do is they basically use the barcode scanners. Okay, the reason why they use the barcode scanner is to get the price of the uh, to get the information of the product product very easily. Okay, like let's say if you have any if you have any sort of discount or if uh, there is some uh, changes in the price or uh, let's say if uh, if the price price needs to be updated okay so all these things uh, can be done very easily with the help of barcode okay so we use barcode to get the information similarly in order to capture the input we have input devices uh, very simple devices like the microphones the webcams the keyboards the touchscreen devices all these are meant to capture the input or capture the data from the user okay since these devices they work in uh, they work so efficiently that as of today we don't have any issues while using those devices but yes there are many advancement in technologies where people are also thinking to uh, to have uh, holograms or 3d holograms uh, by which uh, uh, we can even send the input or we, by which we can even capture the data okay so yes uh, the data capturing process is uh, still under development and still uh, there are many more technologies to come which will be helping us to capture the data efficiently but yes if you capture the data efficiently if you capture no garbages while capturing the data then only while processing 
computer won't give you the garbage values okay let's say uh, if you let us uh, for an instance let us take the example of the data collection that you did or uh, uh, for the id cards okay suppose let's say your name is akshat okay and while writing you gave your name as hakshat okay uh, instead of a you gave the name to be as h okay definitely card you will have the name with h you can't blame uh, you can't blame for that okay others for that okay because that was a typing mistake or that was a typo from your side okay and that is what exactly garbage uh, in, in gar garbage out oh, yes basically that is the gigo term which i often use okay and if you talk about the data storage portion, uh, portion obviously that captured data that you have already captured needs to be stored uh, in an organized manner and in order to store the data we basically use uh, the uh, databases okay yes databases are the tools which uh, helps us to store the data in an efficient manner there was a time when uh, before databases we used to store data in files please try to understand jab hamare paas database ki tools nahi the to hum log kya karte the computer se data ko lekar ek file mein store kar dete for example let's say uh, if we need to store if we need to store uh, let's say uh, the details of each and every students of our school theek hai to ek to math ek to ho gaya ki ek tabular format mein hum log store kar sakte hain dusra tarika ho gaya ki jab अगर मान लो टेबल फॉर्मेट नहीं था या फिर हमारे पास डेटाबेस के टूल्स नहीं थे तो इन दैट केस वी टू स्टोर दैट डेटा इन ए फाइल ठीक है लेट्स से टेक्स्ट फाइल के अंदर मैंने स्टोर कर दिया सारे स्टूडेंट के डिटेल्स जो हमारे स्कूल में एडमिटेड है ठीक है तो दैट इज व्हाट वेयर वी विल बी फॉलोइंग इनटू ट्रबल दैट इज वेयर वी विल बी फॉलोइंग इनटू ट्रबल बिकॉज़ वी आर एब्रप्टली और वी आर डायरेक्टली स्टोरिंग इट इन वी आर डंपिंग द वर्ड डंपिंग गेट्स सूटेबल फॉर दैट वी आर डंपिंग ऑल द डेटा इन अ फाइल okay so from uh, extracting from a file becomes very difficult uh, because the processing of files are slower there are security issues with files okay and even data are not stored in uh, in an organized manner that's why it becomes very difficult so in order to overcome that we have the technologies of databases as of today so yes definitely if you talk about the storage of data then uh, data uh, are basically stored uh, in the databases where uh, we have uh, separate kind of databases which supports sql queries which also supports no sql queries okay sql are basically structured query languages and uh, databases that do not support uh, they do not use uh, sql that to be termed as the no sql databases like we have the mongo db okay and various other databases okay and yes the moment we start storing data in databases it becomes very easy for us to retrieve the data and yes that's why the retrieval the entire process of retrieval becomes very much efficient and very much easy because we are storing the data in an organized manner supposingly uh, let's say uh, you go to your home definitely uh, everyone will have an almira in your home how many of you have almira in your home please type uh, a in the chat box let me see let me get the statistics okay 1 2 3 4 5 okay so this is common right so most of us um, let's say everyone has okay everyone has almira so can anybody tell why do we have almira why do we have a separate container let's say to store the clothes why we basically store the clothes in a separate container why not directly in the room because uh, once again uh, after building the house uh, you will uh, you need to buy an almira that will be uh, that will cost you sub, uh, separately so why do we need to get an almira directly we can store the clothes anywhere else can anybody tell so to keep them organized yes uh, this is the best uh, best answer that we can have to keep them organized okay kyunki organized isliye rakhna hai organized tarike se isliye rakhna hai kyunki uh, jab tumhe zarurat padega ठीक है जब टाइम आएगा कि तुम्हें लेट्स से तुम्हें येलो वाले टी शर्ट पहनना ओके सो इफ यू डोंट कीप इट इन ऑर्गेनाइज्ड वे हियर डे विल गो जस्ट बाय सर्च जस्ट फॉर सर्चिंग द येलो टी शर्ट ओके सो यू विल बी सर्चिंग द येलो टी शर्ट फॉर द एंटायर डे बट बाय द एंड ऑफ द डे यू वोंट बी गेटिंग द येलो टी शर्ट बिकॉज़ यू हैव नॉट स्टोर्ड इट इन एन ऑर्गेनाइज्ड मैनर लेट्स से इन एन अल्मिरा फॉर द फर्स्ट शेल्फ यू आर स्टोरिंग द टी शर्ट्स फॉर द सेकंड शेल्फ यू आर स्टोरिंग uh you are uh, storing uh, your uh, rough clothes or something like that okay or uh, the uh, clothes that you use for uh, indoors okay so uh, supposedly okay supposedly you store the clothes in an organized manner in that case it becomes very easy to retrieve the clothes similarly at the same time if you store uh, the data in an organized manner then definitely uh, it becomes very easy task it becomes a very easy task to retrieve the data efficiently because for retrieval the data needs to be stored in an organized manner and in order to do that we basically use the databases 
to store the data uh, in an organized manner because with the help of databases we'll be able to store data in a huge amount okay so yes so this was all about data capture storage and retrieval why it is very important to capture the data efficiently because yes we already know about the term gigo if we don't capture the data efficiently or if we give garbage data then definitely we are going to get garbage output okay and after capturing the data our task is not yet done we need to store them efficiently and yes why do we need to store because definitely if you are storing the data or if you're capturing the data we'll be requiring the data and that uh, moment where we'll be fetching the data that point should not be a hectic process okay so that's why we store the data in databases so that the task of retrieval will becomes very easy so this was all about today's class in the next class we'll be discussing about data deletion and recovery